Handheld gaming can be a thing of beauty, as long as your game isn't too demanding, then it can be a disaster. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 worst handheld ports. Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, we're looking at previously existing games on consoles, arcades, or PC that were ported to a handheld console and lost much of the magic in the process due to glitchiness, bad performance, and or dumped down gameplay. We'll only be looking at games that attempted to replicate the original experience on a small screen, meaning no spin-off games that tried to be something completely different. <laughs> Number 10, Medal of Honor Underground Game Boy Advance. <laughs> The original PlayStation release was a great action game, complete with an intriguing storyline, a fantastic main character, and your typical bombastic war-based gameplay. Well, it was bombastic at the time. Anyway, two years later, the GBA version was released, and it tarnished the underground name forever. It had legitimately terrible graphics, to the point where you couldn't even tell what you were looking at. Obviously bad frame rate problems, and a horrible disconnect between pressing buttons and your character's action on screen, which eliminated any sense of immersion you might have had, if you really used your imagination. <laughs> Number 9, Hyrule Warriors Legends, original 3DS. <laughs> Hyrule Warriors is one of the Wii U's most sold titles, and when Legends was officially revealed, they declared that the game would come equipped with all DLC, the ability to change characters, and two new characters, so fans were psyched. Until it was released, of course. It wasn't a complete disaster by far, but it's painfully obvious that the original 3DS just wasn't up to the task. Textures look terrible, the frame rate hovers around 20 FPS, enemy numbers were significantly reduced, and there's pop-in everywhere. Fortunately, if you had the new 3DS, the game runs fine, but for the tens of millions of people with the older tech, this was unacceptable. Seriously, why wasn't this game a new 3DS exclusive? Number 8, Minecraft, PlayStation Vita. The Vita release of Minecraft was definitely a financial success. It boosted the sales of the game by 79% and became the biggest Minecraft launch on a PlayStation console. However, it was definitely not the preferred way of playing the game. Players experienced significant frame rate drops and crashes upon launch, and the world size was much smaller than the one featured in PC or even on consoles. While some could handle these imperfections, the most detrimental factor was a save corruption bug which would delete your progress if you manually saved your game while it was quick saving. While it's a fun little handheld addition, this was a serious bug that severely hurt the response of the Vita release. Number 7, Jack and Daxter Collection, PlayStation Vita. Uh, we won't find any more of that dog cooing eco stuff, will we? Cause I'd hate to fall in again and turn into you! Get in there! The Jack and Daxter platformers are some of the greatest games on the PS2, so, when a handheld version was announced, it gave old and new players alike the chance to experience the magic again. And by magic, we mean of course terrible frame rate drops, really awkward controls, simplified textures, and sound glitches. If you played these games on the PS2, then you'll know that the fluid controls, stable frame rate, and gorgeous graphics are all part of the experience, as these games were technical marvels for the time. Unfortunately, inferior performances in all of these aspects significantly hinders the games and their beauty, making this Vita release a real stinker. Dexter, don't touch anything! Though the precursors vanished long ago, the artifacts they left behind can still do great harm. Number 6, Bioshock, Apple iOS. Bioshock was one of the best games of the last generation, and while the iOS release wasn't a total failure, it was very disappointing. You're gonna have to trust me. The controls were absolutely miserable. The game's graphics were also terribly downgraded, to the point where the atmospheric immersion was basically lost. Think of that iconic scene where you see Raptured for the first time, and you're instantly transported to another world. Well, the magic is completely lost on iOS due to the grey and blurry textures. If that wasn't all, the game was eventually pulled from the App Store due to performance issues after numerous iOS upgrades. You definitely need to experience this game, but certainly not on a phone. Number 5, Earthworm Jim, Game Boy Advance. 
despite being released seven years after the original SNES and Genesis version. The Game Boy Advance port of Earthworm Jim was significantly worse, which is just embarrassing for all those involved. Despite the handheld's extra power, it still ran incredibly poorly, complete with terribly dated graphics, poor animation, horrific sound effects, and broken physics. Furthermore, developer Game Titan didn't reduce the size of the sprites to compensate for the GBA's lower resolution, resulting in the camera zoomed way too close to the characters. Which means that on numerous occasions, when you're jumping over a pit, you couldn't see the other side. Fail. <laughs> Number 4. Borderlands 2 PlayStation Vita It was Sony's last-ditch effort to try and save the system by launching it alongside the Vita Slim model, and boy did it backfire. The Vita release was significantly hindered by numerous performance issues, most notably being a very bad frame rate, downgraded graphics, and frequent crashes. The frame rate dropped so much at certain times that fans found it almost unplayable, and the game would constantly crash, giving those players who had soldiered through the molasses-like gameplay no incentive to continue. So you gotta hijack a train, huh? Child's play. The co-op was also reduced to two players rather than the original four, taking out a large swath of what made the console and PC versions so fun and inviting. Running, 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 I'm running over here. Run, 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 run. Number three, Mortal Kombat Advance, Game Boy Advance. Get over here! Mortal Kombat has been ported to numerous handhelds over the years, and their quality due to the weak hardware is about as good as you'd expect. But weak hardware isn't an excuse that this train wreck can fall back on. <laughs> Infamous for being one of the worst ports ever, this game was unplayable from the beginning due to broken hitboxes and ludicrous AI. Combatants were either extremely stupid or frustratingly difficult and cheap, pulling off stunts and moves that you can never dream of and wiping the floor with you in the process. Even if you could fight your way through the game, look at how pathetic these fatalities are. Were you guys even trying? Come on. Fatality. Number 2. Mist, Nintendo DS and Nintendo 3DS. Mist was a revolutionary PC game in the 90s thanks to its groundbreaking visuals for the time and its open-ended exploration. The DS version was remastered using brand new code written specifically for the system, yet it was a complete disaster in every conceivable way. Issues ranged from poor sound quality, terrible visual compression, text that was hard to read, and without a visible mouse cursor it was impossible to figure out what was actually clickable. I know what I must do. This version was later ported over to the 3DS, but it only made things worse. It featured an auto-centering cursor mapped to the circle pad, but it's so imprecise that it makes clicking on the right object kinda difficult. Which, you know, for a point-and-click game, is kind of a big problem. Before we unveil our number one pick, let's have a look at these dishonorable mentions. Number 1. Sonic the Hedgehog Genesis Game Boy Advance Honestly, how could Sega mess this up so bad? Fans were excited for this port because of the GBA's superior power, it had 15 years worth of technological advancements behind it, and it featured Sonic's Spin Dash, which wasn't accessible in the original. Unfortunately, it was a travesty in every way. The graphics and sound design are equally abysmal, and the controls are wonky. Worst of all is the game's performance. The game constantly lags, and seeing how this is a Sonic game, and the whole point of Sonic is to go fast, you can see how this would upset some people. It was a physical, auditory, and performative mess, and is truly our pick for the worst handheld port of all time. <laughs>